So in the last two videos, we've seen the first two postulates of quantum mechanics, the postulates that describe, first of all, uh, quantum states and quantum state spaces, and then uh, quantum dynamics through uh, unitary operations. In this video, we're going to see the third of the four postulates of quantum mechanics. This is the postulate that's about quantum measurement. In particular, measurement has a very strange uh, status in uh, quantum mechanics, a status unlike observation in other uh, physical theories or in how we think about it intuitively in everyday life. You can't just determine uh, the state of a quantum system exactly. Instead, there are limits on what information you can determine about the state of a quantum system. And what the third postulate of quantum mechanics does is it tells us exactly what kinds of measurements are allowed. So it, it, it's a strange postulate. It's a little bit sort of surprising uh, from uh, our everyday uh, intuitive point of view. It's about limits to what we can observe uh, in some sense. So uh, unlike uh, the last two videos, instead of jumping in and just describing uh, outright uh, the postulate, we're going to start with a, a warm-up, sort of a dry run, uh, so to speak. Um, it, it's an attempt uh, at postulate uh, three uh, rather than the full-blown uh, postulate uh, itself. And so what this attempt uh, says is that the way we describe a quantum uh, measurement um, is described uh, using an orthonormal uh, set of uh, 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 vectors for the state space of the, the physical system uh, in question. So we're going to call uh, so it's an orthonormal basis. We're going to call the elements of that basis um, uh, Ej. So it could be any old orthonormal basis um, for uh, the state space. And you know, this is the basic mathematical uh, description or how we specify uh, the measurement. And if the initial state, so before the measurement, if the initial state of the system is psi, then the probability then or excuse me then we we we, we get uh, outcome j corresponding to ej with a probability given by and you can uh, probably guess uh, the rule it's just the rule that we've been using actually I'll, I'll, I'll say it in a slightly different uh, way uh, and I'll explain how it connects to the way we've been talking about. So it's given by uh, this uh, the state psi uh, times the, uh, the, the row vector corresponding to uh, the state uh, ej. So this is like taking the inner product between ej uh, and psi and taking its square or the absolute value square. And of course the, uh, the posterior state um, uh, is just the state. Ej, so that's what the state is after the measurement has been performed. Now, I've written this a little bit differently to earlier uh, when we worked in terms uh, of amplitudes. Uh, so, but it's it's just the same uh, rule. So, in particular, if we expand psi as a linear combination of the Ej states with some coefficients uh, alpha j, so those are the amplitudes. Well, we see that in fact we can determine the amplitude alpha j just by taking uh, the inner product of ej with psi and the reason why you know, because this is an orthonormal set um, this inner product you know when we look at each of these terms uh, the inner product is always zero except for the particular term uh, j uh, when it's one by the normality of ej and so we get uh, alpha j uh, back so this rule then is just saying the probability of j is just the amplitude this this quantity uh, squared Okay, so that's uh, our first attempt at writing at postulate three. It's basically the rule that we've given uh, earlier for describing uh, measurements. There's a problem uh, with this. In fact, there are uh, a couple of problems. Uh, it, it's perfectly good as a postulate, um, but it's not sufficiently general. In particular, it's not sufficiently general to describe measurement of part of a composite uh, quantum system. So you know, we, we talked before about you know, what happens when you measure one qubit of a two qubit quantum system uh, and this uh, postulate uh, doesn't really have sufficient generality to describe it. It needs to be uh, revised. 
Uh, we, we could just revise the postulate according to the rules we gave earlier, but actually we're going to do something that's that's slightly more uh, general. Uh, you know, for the well, for the purposes of um, this course, we're not actually going to make very much use of the more general uh, postulate, but it, it's interesting to see uh, just what the, the most general uh, form uh, is. So in particular, uh, we're going to use V to donate the total state space of a system. And just as an example, um, it might be the two qubit uh, state space, so the one that's spanned uh, by these uh, four computational uh, basis states. And we're going to let VJ be, uh, oh, I should say, that that's just an example. We're, in general, we're imagining an arbitrary state space. So, so just some complex vector space. It might be three-dimensional, it might be four-dimensional, as in this case, it might be nine-dimensional, uh, whatever. It's just some fixed state space. And we're going to imagine that we've got some subspaces, which we'll label VJ, um, and all together, taken together, they're a spanning set of orthonormal subspaces. So taken together, they span the entire state space, but they're also orthonormal uh, to one another. So for example, if we we're in three dimensions, uh, then one, we might, we might uh, take uh, uh, you know, uh, two, uh, a spanning set of two orthonormal uh, subspaces, or excuse me, I should say orthogonal, not orthonormal. Um, that's, a, that's a mistake there, it's orthogonal. The spanning set of orthogonal uh, subspaces. Uh, so imagine we're in you know, three dimensions the, the, uh, for the state space. Then the VJ, um, the first one might be, say, a two-dimensional uh, subspace, so a plane. Uh, and the second of the orthogonal subspaces might be the line which is orthogonal uh, to that plane, just as, as an example. Uh, in the four-dimensional case example that I've, I've talked about up here, we might choose, for example, uh, V1 to be uh, the subspace which is spanned by these two vectors, and V2 to be the subspace which is spanned by these two vectors. So this is the subspace spanned uh, by the vectors where the, the first qubit is 0, and this is the subspace spanned by uh, the, the vectors where the first qubit is 1. And uh, we're going to consider uh, now a matrix uh, PJ corresponding to that uh, subspace, which is just the matrix which projects onto subspace uh, VJ. Uh, so let me just remind you, uh, this should be a notion familiar with, from basic linear algebra, but let me just remind you, if we have a general vector, it might be normalized or not, it doesn't matter for our purposes now, it's just a general vector, it can always be broken up um, into a part that's in the direction of subspace J, so we'll call that psi J, plus psi J perp. So this is the part that's in, in the direction orthogonal to VJ. And what the projector does is it just it just takes the state psi and tells you what the part which is you know uh, uh, within uh, VJ uh, what it is. So what psi J is. Uh, you can think of this, if you like, more or less as a definition, um, it, it, sort of a, a somewhat loose uh, uh, definition. Um, you can make it a little bit more formal, but I'm assuming that you've already seen this, this notion previously, and I'm just, just trying to remind you um, of what the, the projector does. So to make it a little bit more concrete in this particular case up here, let's consider um, you know, what the projector uh, does, and it'll uh, become quite obvious. So if we've got a general two qubit uh, state, so alpha zero zero plus beta zero one uh, plus uh, gamma one zero plus delta one one, then of course what the projector onto this first subspace does is it just leaves us with these bits which are in that subspace. So alpha zero zero plus beta zero one, and it projects out. We say uh, these remaining bits which are orthonormal uh, to it. Okay, so that's an example of a projector. And uh, the way we recast uh, postulate 3, the actual form that is used, uh, makes use of these projectors and subspaces to describe uh, the measurement. So here's how it's done. Um, the actual 
sort of true, so to speak, uh, form for postulate three, and that is that a quantum uh, measurement, instead of being described by those state, uh, those uh, orthonormal states, um, is instead is, uh, described uh, by a spanning set of orthogonal uh, subspaces uh, Vj, just as we had on the last um, uh, slide, uh, with uh, corresponding uh, projectors Pj. Now these aren't strictly needed, but they, they certainly make things a lot easier um, uh, to describe now mathematically. In particular, if the initial state, this is before the measurement, uh, is psi, uh, then, well, I won't say the probability first, I'll say what the posterior state is, it's a little bit easier. Uh, well, actually, it's not really, but uh, anyway, that's uh, the posterior state uh, uh, is uh, pj psi divided by a normalizing factor the length of pj psi, so it has a unit uh, norm. Uh, and uh, the corresponding probability is just given by pj psi all squared, so the, the, the square of that uh, normalizing factor. And this revised form of the postulate has as a special case the earlier form. And in that uh, earlier form, uh, the, the uh, orthogonal spaces, or subspaces really, I should write, um, uh, Vj are just um, they're the subspaces spanned by uh, the orthonormal uh, vectors, the the different Ej uh, that we mentioned uh, earlier, um, and uh, you know that should be at least plausible, and maybe you can actually see it, uh, and we'll work through uh, explicitly in the exercises to see if that's the case. Uh, this postulate also gives us a special case, uh, the partial uh, measurement. So when we measure, you know, one qubit of two or two qubits of five or whatever. Uh, and I've already sort of outlined how that uh, works uh, very roughly, and maybe you can just see uh, that it works. Uh, but you'll complete working out the details uh, also uh, in uh, the exercises. So uh, I guess a particularly interesting example that goes beyond anything we saw in the, the earlier stuff about quantum computing is the case of when we have, for example, a three-dimensional state space. So not a qubit or a pair of qubits or, or whatever, something new, uh, actually often called a qtrit for the obvious reasons. Um, and we might imagine that we have, for example, a uh, just two orthogonal subspaces, one of which is two-dimensional, so a plane, uh, and another one of which is, um, is the, the line uh, orthogonal uh, to it. Um, and, and you can work through um, and uh, see um, you know, in that case, um, uh, exactly how the measurement works. Again, we'll, we'll do the, the details uh, in uh, uh, the exercises, um, but yeah, that, that's an example of how this uh, takes us beyond uh, what we saw in uh, the earlier uh, videos. Uh, I'm not going to go into much more detail. We're not actually going to really make uh, much uh, more use of this general form uh, of postulate three, it's introduced more for culture and for completeness uh, than anything else. We'll actually work you know, with the description that we gave in, in the earlier videos, uh, but I thought it's interesting uh, to see. It's probably the most controversial postulate of uh, quantum uh, mechanics, certainly the, the most surprising. You know, it was quite shocking uh, to physicists in the 1920s uh, when this uh, form of the postulate was first uh, really proposed or uh, converged upon um, by physicists uh, to realize that there might actually be a physical theory, the theory of quantum mechanics, in which the state, the physical state, is not directly accessible, but rather can, we can only get indirect information uh, through rules uh, like this. That was quite a shock at the time, and it remains something uh, which is in many ways only uh, poorly uh, understood. Um, I won't sort of go further into that. There's been a tremendous amount written about it, to, to put it uh, uh, mildly, uh, and so I don't want to don't want to focus too much on it. Although you might uh, enjoy doing some reading, 
Um, instead, we're going to you know, move along and uh, talk about uh, the postulates, uh, the next postulate of, of quantum mechanics, uh, the fourth one, uh, which relates to how we describe composite quantum systems.